In our previous video, we discussed some exception best practices in Java. In this video, we're going to see how to apply some exception best practices in a Spring Boot project. I want to give a little refresher of what our project looks like. We have an optional HTML view on the top, and then we have a controller that that HTML view calls. That controller can also be accessed directly via endpoints that consume and return JSON. From the controller, we go to service, from service to DAO, DAO to CRUD repository, and then CRUD repository to database. The experiments that we'll do in this video is we'll watch what happens when we try to save a specimen with the database turned on, and then we'll see what happens when we turn off the database and try to save the specimen again, and that will give us a context to discuss some best practices. If we take a look at my virtual machine, we see that WAMP is on and indeed the database is running. Let's go to Postman and try to create a new specimen by using the post endpoint. So I'll say plant ID 82, just change a couple things here. I hit send, and we see we get a 200 response, which indicates that everything is okay. We go back and refresh our database table, and we see that sure enough, our new specimen has been added. Let's talk through what's going to happen when we turn off the database. First of all, the DAO is kind of on the lower end of that layer cake I showed earlier, and you see here's a save method that throws an exception. Now remember exception handling best practices. If I'm here in a DAO that specifically calls a database, and that database is offline, it's going to throw an exception. Is there anything I can do to fix that situation if I'm here? And if the answer is yes, then I want to put in a try-catch block and I want to fix it. But in that case, the answer is going to be no, because all we can do from this class is call the database. And if that's offline, there's nothing we can do. So we just have to say to the person who called us, sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. And we do that by simply re-throwing the exception back to the method that called us by including this throws clause. You notice there's no try catch here and that's okay. As a matter of fact, let me show you an anti-pattern. I've just added a try catch block around this and I can tell you that everything I've added here adds no value to what I had before in this case, because we're doing some activity here and if something goes wrong, we're catching the exception and then rethrowing it. And if we didn't have this try catch structure here in the first place, it would just get rethrown anyway. So this is not adding any value. Now, if I did something else in the catch, like I logged the error at the very least, or I tried to maybe pull the data from other, some other source, then it would be adding value. But if you simply have an empty try catch and it's just rethrowing an exception, that's the same behavior you would get if you didn't have the try catch in the first place. So I'm satisfied with how this is set up. So I'll simply snap a breakpoint here so that we can look at this in just a moment. And then I'm going to go back to the method that calls this. And that method is in our specimen service. And if we take a look at our specimen service, could this do anything to handle the exception? Well, maybe. If our database is offline, is there another place where we can get the data? Do we have a local cache maybe? That could be an option, and indeed it is an option we will explore later. But at the moment, the specimen service can't do anything to heal the exception, so it's doing the correct thing, and it's throwing it back to the controller. I can tell you already, the controller is not set up properly for, that, for this, and that is what we're about to fix. You notice I've done a cardinal sin here. I have an empty catch block. That's probably one of the worst things you can do with an exception because the exception object itself is telling you what went wrong and it's helping you figure out how to fix this. And if you're looking at a log from something that happened two days ago from some software that you wrote, that's ultra important. But we're throwing it away and even worse, we're acting like everything is okay because we simply return new specimen. Let's see what happens when I shut down the database Let's take a look in Postman and see how that responds. I'll click on the taskbar and confirm that WAMP is stopped, and now I'm back in Postman. I've changed some details here so we can have a unique object. I choose Send, have a little bit of a delay, and we see after 30 seconds it responds with 200 OK. Well, it's certainly not OK. It's 30 seconds because it was trying to wait for the database, but we certainly shouldn't send back a 200 to say that this specimen saved correctly because indeed it did not save correctly. A better approach is to return a 200 from the try and either a 400 or a 500, maybe an internal server error from the catch. To do that, we're going to need to restructure things a bit and return a response entity as we're doing up above in the fetch by method because a response entity can return an object it can tell that object to be JSON, and it can return a status. So let's borrow a little bit from here. 
If you see what I've done now, I've handled the happy path. I've declared our object here, and then I've declared our headers, uh, and in the headers I can indicate that we're going to have a JSON response. I receive back the new specimen, and then I return the new specimen down here. Now, why didn't I put the return statement in the try block? That's perfectly valid, although a lot of people think that return should only go at the bottom of a method. A mid-method return is kind of like a go-to. Now, okay, what about the exception case? Isn't that just going to say, hey, everything's okay? Well, no, it's not, because in that case, because we've had an exception, we can interrupt things and say, hey, not everything is okay. Ah, but won't it go down to this line 112? No, not if we put a return statement in the exception. It's going to return from there, and it's going to skip line 112. So let's change the status from OK to internal server error. And it, indeed, we no longer need a specimen object either. I've restarted the application, and I've turned off our database. So I'm going to do two trials now. One, I'm simply going to send this and let it run, and we'll see the result. After that, I'm going to step through in the debugger so that we can watch it. This time the response was again 30 seconds as it was waiting for that database connection to time out. And the status return was not 200, but this time 500 internal server error. And that makes sense as it lines up with the 500 series of internal server errors. Now let's debug. I'll send the same request again. We see IntelliJ IDEA lights up orange, and we see that we're in the create specimen endpoint, and it's about to walk down the specimen service, so we can press F7 to step in. Now between the service and the DAO, there's a bit of interceptor logic going on that's a bit tricky to step through, so I'm going to choose F9, which will take us all the way down to the DAO itself. Now take a look at this line, because here's where it's trying to access the database that is not on right now. I'm going to choose F8, and we're going to see that the debugger is going to freeze up, and indeed it will for about 30 seconds as it's waiting for the database and eventually times out. I'll pause the video so you don't have to wait through that. It's hit a break point. Now I'm going to go ahead and choose F9 and just see where we go next. We'll take a look at that. It stopped on the breakpoint inside of the catch block in the controller, and this is where it's returning that internal server error. So we know I can choose F8 from here, and it's not going to hit the next line 112, which says everything's okay. Instead, it's simply going to return this internal server error. We go back to Postman, and we see internal server error. So great, that handles it for our service. One other thing I want to consider is the user interface itself. And this is going to be fairly straightforward. If I scroll up to the user interface save specimen method, you notice that in the exception I just print stack trace and then I return start as if everything's okay. Instead of returning start, let's return error. And then let's go to our resources and make a, oh, we have an error page. How about that? So we're simply going to return an error page and we don't want to tell the user too much information. One of two things can go wrong there. Number one, we might confuse the user. Picture someone who doesn't understand technology and you tell them 404 or 500 database offline. That doesn't make any sense to them and they don't know how to remedy the situation. Now consider another situation, which is you have someone who's trying to hack you. You want to give them as little information as possible. So a simple something went wrong page will be fine. There is one unrelated thing that I want to change in the save specimen file itself, and that is the method is get. When I was building this, I demonstrated it with get so that I could show the name value pairs in the URL. And a viewer pointed out that if I'm creating something, it really should be post. And that's been itching on me for quite a while. So I'm going to go ahead and fix it here. Now, incidentally, our request mapping is rather generic. I could change this to a post mapping. So post mapping is a bit more specific because it means we're saving something, where request mapping would handle any of the HTTP actions. So not related to exceptions, just something I keep seeing, and now I'm cleaning it up. Now I've restarted the application and I have a brand new specimen. Let's see what happens when I press submit. And sure enough, we see something went wrong. So in this video, we've taken a look at best practices for exceptions in Spring Boot. I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.